In Genesis, Jesus Christ is the breath of life. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's our high priest. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he's our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In 1 and 2 Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra and Nehemiah, he's the rebuilder of the broken down walls of human life. And in Esther, he is our Mordecai. In Job, he is our ever living redeemer. In Psalms, he is our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he is our wisdom. And in Song of Solomon, he is our loving bridegroom. In Isaiah, he's the Prince of Peace. In Jeremiah, he is the righteous branch. In Lamentations, he's the weeping prophet. In Ezekiel, he's the wonderful four-faced man. And in Daniel, he's the fourth man in life's fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's the faithful husband, forever married to the backslider. In Joel, he's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and fire. In Amos, he is our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he is mighty to save. In Jonah, he is our great foreign missionary. In Micah, he is the messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he is our strength and shield. In Habakkuk, he is God's evangelist crying, Revive thy works in the midst of the years. In Zephaniah, he is our savior. In Haggai, he is the restorer of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he is the fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanliness. And in Malachi, he is a stone of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. In Matthew, Jesus Christ is the King of the Jews. In Mark, he's the servant. In Luke, he is the son of man, feeling what you feel. In John, he's the son of God. In Acts, he's the savior of the world. In Romans, he's the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians, he's the rock, the father of Israel. In 2 Corinthians, he's the triumphal one, giving victory. In Galatians, he is your liberty. He set you free. In Ephesians, he is the head of the church. In Philippians, he is your joy. In Colossians, he is your completeness. In 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he is your hope. In 1st Timothy, he's your faith. In 2nd Timothy, he's your stability. In Titus, he is truth. In Philemon, he's your benefactor. In Hebrews, he's the power, he is your perfection. In James, he's the power behind your faith. In 1st Peter, he's your example. In 2nd Peter, he's your purity. In 1st John, he is your life. In 2nd John, he's your pattern. In 3rd John, he's your motivation. In Jude, he's the foundation of your faith. And in Revelation, he is your coming king. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He's the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, undefeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced in his pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The schools can't explain him and the leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The people couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. The New Age can't replace him. He is alive, love, longevity, and more. He is goodness, kindness, gentleness, and God. He is holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, and pure.
sure. His ways are right and his word is eternal. His will is unchanging and his mind is on me. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. He is my guide. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my comfort. He is my 